guys, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, we're gonna be covering how I made the ultimate 3D printing dry box for around 100 bucks. It's probably gonna be the last one you ever need. Now, the first thing going through everybody's mind is why not just buy one instead of having to make your own dry box? Uh, and aside from the fun of it, it's because we personally use these large three kilogram spools. Uh, they're about 14 inches in diameter and there's no off the shelf options that are reasonable that we could purchase. Um, so we have a lot of machines, we got to make a lot of dry boxes and we want to keep the cost relatively low. Um, so the ammo box wasn't our first choice. We started with just the regular plastic bin with a seal on it. Um, and it worked, but it was lacking a lot of features and we thought we could do it better. So check it out. I'm going to take you in close and show you some of the special features on this dry box here. So why choose an ammo box instead of a higher quality plastic container? And really it came down to the price versus the capabilities of the actual container. These are pretty much bulletproof. You can get them online for a pretty reasonable price. And the rubber seal on these is fantastic. Uh, totally water and air tight. It's hard to get that in a plastic container that matches the durability and price point of this. Now, obviously this isn't your standard 50 cal or 30 cal ammo can. This is for 20 millimeter. It's an M548 can. Uh, but that plays to your advantage because you can fit multiple one kilogram spools. So you can actually do two side by side here and here for a total of four. And specifically for us, it allows us to fit those large three kilogram spools comfortably on the inside. The first question we had was, how do we get the filament to exit the box? It seems like a simple question, but having a fixed uh, Bowden tube with one of those screw fittings exiting the box here, wouldn't work. And the reason why is because we've got this pivoting arm and latch that would block it. So what we did is come up with a three piece latching assembly here. You got two side pieces that are screwed into the box and this part, which is sealing and you can see it has the Bowden tube as well that exits it. And so how this works is say it's time to swap your filament is you'll open up the top change out the spool, put the new one in there. And then when you feed that new fresh filament through, put it through the center hole. And then there's a little tab right here on the side. Once you've got that through, you can see we have enough room to close it, but obviously there's a big gap right in the middle there. That's going to let a lot of air and moisture into the box. So that's where part three comes in. You simply feed your filament in here. And I've got a sliding uh, latch here that actually will interface on this wedge surface. So that slides in, closes, and when you press that, it actually kind of pushes it down on that O-ring. You get a really nice airtight seal. All right, and here we are looking top down in the ammo box. What we haven't covered yet is what keeps this dry box dry. And it's really simple. You can see here, I've got a humidity indication strip uh, that just tells me the relative humidity inside the box. And I line the base with some desiccants, uh, simple, easy. And I found that that'll last for three to four months before I need to change out desiccant and uh, no active heating element or anything required at all. But what really matters is this right here. Obviously these are two arms that are made to hold the filament spool. It simply just sits in there and it's got a pipe in the middle that holds it in place. That's not what's really exciting. What is exciting right here is where the wires are coming out of, and that's a load cell. What that does is as the weight on this arm goes up and down, there's some resistors here and it outputs a value through that four pin connector and it sends the value to this. Let me focus on that. This is a custom PCB. Uh, the design is from Interlink Knight. I'll put a link to him in the description. And I changed his case design and buttons a little bit but the base design is his. So what this does is it'll take the input here. You see, we got the four pins. That's the input from the load cell and it takes power from my 3D printer. And what this will do is actually output the weight remaining in grams on that spool. So now I never need to guess again uh, if I have enough for a print. The arms for this made from our friends at Send Cut Send, beautiful resource and it worked perfectly for this project. All right, and there you have it. That's a wrap. Couldn't be happier with how the project came out. Love the look of it, the functionality, 
And all in all, it ended up being a really fun project. If you learned something and you want to apply something for your own Drybox, you can find some of the files on our website. There'll be a link in the description. And leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.